So now I'm going to show you how to manage non-transfusion products inventory, such as your medical supplies, your nutritional supplies, supplies within stage and tax. We're going, to, we're going to receive, maintain, and distribute inventory all from one dashboard that would be used by your warehouse manager. So we're going to go and start with receiving our inventory. Through purchasing, we're able to receive our inventory into the system and create back orders when needed. So in here, we're able to drill down into our purchasing module through the dashboard and see what actual purchase orders are ready to receive. So warehouse manager is getting the inventory and they're going to know which ones to come in here and receive based off that information that's given to them from the, from the vendor they've, um, they're purchasing it from. So in this case, we'll go ahead and um, we're going to convert this one into a purchase order receiver. So it's taking that purchase order, which isn't posting anywhere in the system, it is marking that inventory is on order in the inventory module so that the warehouse manager knows that, but um, it doesn't actually post anywhere in the system until we get to this step. And so when our warehouse manager is getting ready to receive inventory, they can take a look at what items are actually received, whether it's their hemostats or needles or any other sort of uh, supplies um, or blood bags they need for the, for the different collection centers. Um, and then they can verify that the quantities that they actually received matched what's in the, what was in the original PO. When they don't match, when shipments are being done separately and we want to be able to honor cutoff periods, we can partially receive those different quantities. In this case, maybe we only got 40 of those. And maybe we only got 10 of these, of these hemostats. So then we can say, all right, but we received all 13 of our, what item is this? Of our culture tubes. So we can say, all right, we received all those, but we're still missing some hemostats and um, this other item here, which is our needles. So with that case, let's go ahead and put our, we'll keep this in February, which is kind of where we're doing most of our transaction acting today. Um, and then date matters because what this does, this allows us to know what date it's hitting our inventory subledger. Because when your inventory, when your warehouse manager or your inventory manager presses post here, um, it will in the background, the system will know that we need to increase the quantity and value of our inventory for those items in the inventory subledger. And then it will, uh, roll up into the GL and, up, and up, uh, update your inventory balances in real time based off the transaction that's happening here. So that way your, your balance sheet balances and inventory subledger should, should be able, should, uh, will be in balance um, after this transaction is complete. Go ahead and press post. And so because I did not fully receive that, uh, that PO, it does, it then creates a back order. And so with the back order, I can either, you know, receive the rest of it or if the order got canceled and go ahead and delete it or reverse it. So it gives me options to handle what, to handle that back order however I need to. Um, <clears throat> so now that we received inventory into our system, we need to be able to maintain it. And we can use reports such as this inventory status report to do so. We can track how much our inventory has been used by our collection centers, what's on hold, what's on hand, and even what's on order at, at, um, at an easy glance using this report on this dashboard. So then our inventory manager can also drill down on these and really get more, more ideas of where these uh, inventories actually are, whether on order, what transaction brought them on order, what transaction brought them on hand. So they have that ability to research directly from this report. We can also maintain our inventory through features such as cycle counts, which allows us to count, uh, which allows us to keep our inventory up to date based on actual inventory on hand. So we can distribute our count sheets um, to our warehouse employees account and track what's in the warehouse. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at a um, account that's already in process here. So when we do resume that count, it shows us what inventory items were selected for counting. So you don't have to count all the items in one count. You can decide what items we want to be counted either by selecting them manually or by doing it by warehouse as well. So we can also have different warehouses for inventory to be stored in and even do transfers between those warehouses as needed. Uh, so once the account has been completed, so you're, uh, we, so when your employees have their, get the worksheet, you can print that out of here, send that off to the employees, do the actual count. They bring back those finished uh, worksheets you can then um, update these numbers for what they actually found in their warehouses. And when we press complete count, it then brings us to an option to be able to reconcile our books based off the actual counts in the warehouses. So what that means is that we're able to complete the cycle count and in the background intact is doing those updates for us, telling, um, doing the manual, doing the adjustments for reducing quantities, increasing quantities with their values. 
um, and costs in the inventory subledger, which then rolls up to your balance sheet. And then also being able to track what quantity has been damaged and how much that's affecting your, your, your financials and your expenses. Um, so that's really saving you ha not having to find those manual sheets that were, that were uh, filled out by your employees, doing those manual adjustments up front in the system and hoping that they match. This all does it all in one place for you. So there are also reports straight out of the box that give us insight on where inventory value is in physical counts as a specified date. Uh, there's lots of different reports. I'm just going to show you one that really uh, brings it all together. The inventory evaluation report here allows you to be able to tie your, your inventory subledger to your GL at any given point in time. So we'll do it as of today. And you can also specify what if you wanted to look for specific items, or in this case, we're going to look at a specific product line. So we're looking at just our medical supplies inventory. And then we can, we can uh, press view on here. And in real time, it's going to give us all our information for that item that has to do with its value. So we know what the last, last cost was, the quantity on hand, the unit cost, and then we can see what value is actually being brought up to the GL. So this, uh, this report really helps us tie together what our subledger amounts are to our GL and be able to, do that be able to reconcile and make sure those are always in balance. 